The administration argues that the states don't even have the right to challenge this program in federal court. Uh, it would be a kind of a procedural outcome. And it would take either Justice uh, Kennedy or the Chief Justice to join with the liberals in such a ruling. Now, as I said, there didn't seem to be much support for that today. In fact, the Chief Justice said that Texas was in a bit of a catch-22 if it couldn't file this lawsuit. But you never know. Sometimes oral arguments don't exactly show you what the justices are thinking. Barack Obama has promised from day one that he would change the immigration policies of America. Even as he knew Republicans and those who were tired of watching the borders being overrun for decades and visas allowing those with dark intent to pass into this country with nary a second glance would all fight him tooth and nail. That hammering is reaching a political crescendo as the Supreme Court wrestles with the president's plan that would shield millions of undocumented immigrants from deportation and allow them to work in America legally. On the other side, numerous states claiming the president has overstepped himself this time and the buck stops there. Questions are, did he and does it? Our guest has filed briefs before the U.S. Supreme Court, the Supreme Court of Texas, and understands the inner workings of such constitutional law. Now a partner in the appellate law section of Sheaf and Stone in Texas, welcome Byron Henry back to the hard line. Byron, thanks for being here. Let's answer that question right up front that every American wants to know. Did the president overreach in signing his order? Well, and I think you can first look to one of Chief Justice Roberts' questions yesterday when he actually quoted one of Barack Obama's speeches in which he said that he himself lacked the authority to go further than Congress had gone in its previous uh, immigration law re revision. So the Chief Justice was basically citing the president himself in saying that I can do no more because I'm not a king. I can't change the law single-handedly. Well, a few years later, I guess he had a... Uh, a change of heart on that issue and got and spoke with some lawyers and maybe they told him he could in fact change the law somewhat and issue this executive action. But as the states argued and some of the justices noted in oral argument, there is a lot of concern and it is a big issue as to whether or not the president can basically change the legal status of these immigrants with the stroke of a pen. There's a great piece in there, Byron, because you touched on it, the president being a king and so many people say that you're not allowed to do this. Well, there are instances when presidents can issue executive orders. They can take unilateral action. I mean, very briefly, because people always hear this all the time, what you just said. What are those instances, and, and do any of them, in your opinion, apply to what we're looking at here? Well, there's a couple clear instances where presidents can issue executive orders because the president has a, a tremendous amount of authority within the executive branch to see that the laws that Congress passes and he signs are executed. One is when Congress expressly leaves gaps in the law or statutes and basically tells the president in his discretion and through, through administrative agencies to fill in those gaps with his own authority, consistent with the statutes. And others, of course, are just direct authorizations by Congress just leaving things in the executive branch's hands and giving discretion to the president on how to rule on certain items. So Congress has the ability to kind of shift that over and give the president some discretion. The problem here is, as the court pointed out in oral argument, that this plan that President Obama implemented was actually brought up before Congress almost identically to the, to the one President Obama uh, issued and was rejected by Congress. So the argument would be Congress has thought of this plan, decided it wasn't uh, going to enact it into law, and yet the president on his own believed that, well, it's good policy, so I'm going to go ahead and do it by executive order, which is a little bit further than any other president has gone with respect to immigration, including former Presidents Reagan and, and the first President Bush. i got about a minute left. Here's Ken Paxton, the Texas Attorney General, explaining why the plaintiffs challenged the president's actions. There's a piece in here to follow up on. Here it is. If we allow a president, whether it's this president or a future president, no matter what their political persuasion or their party to make changes in the law without congressional approval, then we will end up with a perverted constitution. It is truly in many eyes here, Byron, nonpartisan, the issue here. But we have now a Supreme Court that is in many ways partisan. As you look at this and see what the president is doing, what the courts are fighting back on and waiting for SCOTUS to talk about this, is there any doubt in your mind that at the end of the day this is going to be a 4-4 deadlock and this is going to go right back to the states anyway? I believe, as General Paxton stated in that clip, that the 
issue isn't partisan. The issue is is separation of powers or structural in the Constitution. But unless there's some sort of procedural issue that the court uh, compromises on, I believe that there is a strong divide among these justices on the president's authority in this instance. And it probably comes down 4-4, which means that the injunction that issued by the Fifth Circuit will stay in place, meaning uh, President Obama's plan will probably not go into effect before he leaves office. And just 10 seconds, real quick. The president said he acted because Congress failed to act. Yes or no, is that a legitimate argument? Probably not. Congress has the right to pass the laws. That's like saying Congress didn't pass a tax increase that the president wanted, and the president obviously cannot unilaterally impose a tax increase. So I don't think that stands constitutional muster. And there you go. That's right in the whole essence here of overreaching. Byron Henry, always a pleasure, Byron. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk again. Now, if the government is not covering up possible Saudi involvement in 9-11, why is a report on those attacks still missing pieces of information? Senator Bob Graham will join us, and we'll discuss just that when we continue next on The Hardline.